All righty, we're back. Welcome to the inaugural, well, officially the first Keeper League podcast, unofficially the second Keeper League podcast. I am host Jack Dodd, and as all of you know, President and General Manager of your Google Bandits. Um, we're excited to finally, you know, get this back going and, and give you guys some uh, content for uh, you fantasy lovers back at home. Um, as many of you know, we're a group of friends that started this uh, league um, headquartered in Duluth, Minnesota. Um, the format is here is that we can keep two players every year for the next year's squad. We'll talk about that more in detail later. We're entering year seven, and this league has turned into so much more than just a fantasy football league. It's tr turned into a true war zone. Uh, multiple political parties have formed due to large rule disputes. Today, uh, we have the extremely, extremely powerful Players Union, uh, the newly formed Independent Party, and the league office whose power is ever so dwindling. Um, some lifelong friendships in this league have been fractured forever. It could be repaired still, we'll see. Um, fantasy legacies are being debated every day. And there's one thing really that, that, that matters, and there's only one thing that matters, and that's being a crown Keeper League champion. Um, you know, I do wish I was joking about all this, but I'm not. It really does mean that much to us. Um, some of the conversations we've had in our group message have been just too good and, and too good of content, too relatable not to share with you guys. Um, so we had no choice but to create this podcast, which should serve as a guide to uh, fantasy lovers and what, what fantasy sports is all about everywhere. So with no further ado, I want to introduce, you guys can see them on the screen here if you're listening on YouTube, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you cannot see them. But uh, trust me, they have, they have good looks going, good acts going. Uh, Two-time champion, Hot Sauce Football's in the house. What's going on, Hot Sauce? How are you doing, bud? I'm doing good. Uh, let's, turn up that, let's, turn up, let's turn up that mic a little bit, Hot Sauce. We got one-time champion, the Army. How are you doing, Army? <laughs> a lot better than Hot Sauce's mic, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we also got one-time yeah, one, uh, one hey, hey, one champion, another like, champion in the house. So four championship rings here. Not not every day you get that on the podcast. Top cheese football. How are we doing, cheese? Doing really well, Bandits. Uh, just want to thank you again for putting this thing together because I think this is a great idea. So I think we're going to get some good stuff out of this. So. Well, it's, it's great to have you, cheese, and it's great to see your uh, your face again, uh, of course. And uh, last time I checked, TGY, you don't have a ring, but it, it's good to have you, and I thought you might have a few things you want to share with the pod. <laughs> No, yeah, thanks, thanks, Jack. But right, I don't have a ring, and you're you're right about that. But right off the bat, I want to address something. Um, something kind of odd came across my desk the other day. I don't have an Instagram, as a lot of you guys know, but someone sent me a little Instagram link, and it was the Keeper League media page, just posting like a video out there. It was super confusing because like, was there a podcast last week? Was there not a podcast last week? I'm kind of trying to figure that out. But there's just some video of Jack, the Google Band manager. Posting some video talking about TGY, and that's it. That's all we got about last week. We're talking about TGY, and he made some pretty, pretty disrespectful comments. Especially coming from his standing in the league compared to my standing in the league. So I just wanted to. Rat I don't know if you heard the video. Tune over to the Keeper League Media page. Please do. Check Please it do. Out. Great so video. Hear it. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but we can just wrap up some quick facts about TGY since I wasn't even there to defend myself. And like I said, no one really knows why that video was posted. Like, there was no podcast that came out, no context or anything. But TGY is a staple of this league. And like I said, that was disrespectful for many reasons. If I just kind of scroll over to what we've done in this league, and I mean, we have the second most wins in this league, second highest win percentage in this league. We've been to the playoffs, tied for the most in this league. We've been to the most semifinals in this league. We take it second twice, third once, um, won a few division titles along the way. And compared to the bandit, the guy who criticized me, he is bottom in the second to last in the league in wins and wins percentage. He's made the playoffs once, maybe twice. He's been in the semifinals only once. He has no playoff wins. No playoff wins in there. He hasn't won That's a playoff not true. game. He's been a bottom feeder. He's been a bottom it's feeder it. in this league. Oh, he won a third place game. My bad. He did that win a third place count. game. It that. doesn't count. He's been a bottom feeder in this care. league. And the, one of the biggest stats around this thing is TGY is 5-1 versus the Google Bandits in six years in this league. That should be noted as well. So 
That was disrespectful and out of line. I'm glad I can nick it down right away. I wow. totally agree. Thanks for having me on disrespectful. I'm excited to be on the podcast. Right over the uh, gates. Can I, can I, that, that's a big. Could I have a chance to respond, please? For God's sake. <laughs> Go right ahead. You can. can I I mean, to respond? You went after me without me on the pod, but you can you can reply. Well, yeah. You know the winning percentage and all that is great, and that's why we play the game. But there is truly only one thing that we can control in 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 fantasy sports. You can't control who you're playing. You can't control who they start. You can't control you know in any of that metrics. You can only control what you put on the football field and what you start. So I have some stats of my own. Um, <laughs> in six, in six, in six years of this league, in six years of this league, on, I mean this is a close margin, but it's the facts. The Google Bandits points for average thirteen hundred points. Team Good Use average points for is twelve thousand and eighty, and that's close. But the Google Bandits product and points for that they put on the field has been higher in the past six years than Team Good Use. So congratulations on no rings or whatever you thought you accomplished, because we're only in here for one ring, for one thing, and that's a ring. But I put a better product in the football field, so you know whoever's making the schedule is is really helping you guys out, and congratulations on I'm, I'm getting the least most tra- net tra- traveled miles in the league or whatever it is that's causing you guys to win football games and have so little points against. But all I know is uh, I'm, I'm controlling what I can control, and that's putting a football team that gets a lot of points for on the field, and it's been above years in the past six leagues or six years of this league. So, I, mean, I, I would love for that to get back checked first. Though. I don't even <laughs> believe that. I mean, the win, the win, the winning percentage speaks for itself. This guy, he has no playoff wins. Um, you can't win a ring if you don't even win and haven't won a game in the playoffs. So that's kind of it. All righty. I want to try, man. I, just, I, I don't, I, I don't think, I don't think a third place game counts as a playoff win. So technically, I would agree. Google Bandits have zero playoff wins. I just don't think it matters. Well, much. like because like what like you said, all it cares about is rings. <laughs> And maybe maybe a semis win, but you whoa, lost those semis whoa. this year. I do. Whoa, whoa, semis wait. win. Very wait, 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 wait. So semis a semifinals very, 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 very win. Straight. So a semifinals win counts, <laughs> but winning a hundred bucks in a third place game doesn't mean shit. Yeah. Why? But then both no, are, both no, are, both are semifinal are wins are very, very, very important count. in this play. All right. Semifinals and quarterfinals are and the only wins that matters, and then the championship. Third place game mm-hmm. doesn't matter. I, I would agree, Hot Sauce. I would totally agree with that. Um, yeah, you know, if a semifinal win yeah, matters and you, lose the, Congrats, and you lose in the championship and the third place two game doesn't matter, I, I don't know what I don't know what the logic is behind there. But with that being said, I, I think we should move on to our, our next segment. Some fireworks early in the show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that video that was put on the Keeper League media page on Instagram was one of the most disrespectful I, things I've ever seen. I'm gonna try. Well, it was disrespectful. Being quick, there was a little was. Edit, edit, was. a little editing trick going on for the Google Bandits. The, if you would have done a little 20 seconds earlier, both me and Hot Sauce say how disrespectful comparing you give to the Jacksonville Jaguars, right? The first thing you yeah, said was no, Jack and Paul Rio. Whoa, that was disrespectful. The first thing we said. I, I, yeah, everyone in the league knows Dales. I, I, compl- I complimented him. I said he had a lot of good teams and a lot of talent around there. But when you start Kendall Hinton in a win and win, you're not a championship-level manager, and that's Jacksonville's problem. They got to the AFC Championship. It's that simple. But <laughs> I, I mean, think we should I'm move not, on. I don't hate the comparison. But they got – they saying. got <laughs> – yeah, they no, got, no, no, no. This is, I would be a Steelers they, or a Ravens type. Someone who's around, who's competing no. year in and year out. You can't say that about the Google Bands. If I actually, I think I have the record. I think they've won four games like three times. They have the second, the second most or least wins averaging in this league. More, they rarely win in this league. Averaging more points for a year than your team is. Though, so. The Google Band, I mean, just the facts speak for themselves. The Google Bandits rarely win in this well, league. Thought, they have the well, second most. They had a bye last year. I thought the Vikings. You watched us on the couch last year when we had a bye and playing the I, semis. So, all right. <laughs> I think okay, I we that, knocked that segment out. We don't get there. Yeah, we knocked that one. No, 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 no. I don't want. No, I don't want to wrap. No, it up. I think I think that's. Good. I, I don't want to cut anyone off. The Vikings. 
I thought the Vikings were the perfect comparison for TGY. Like, he's literally Kirk Cousins. He goes, he makes the playoffs one year, loses. Oh, man. Can of worms. Can of worms. Yeah. Kirk Cousins. Can of worms. Perfect comparison. All right. Whatever. Let's wrap it up. So, same kind of reason for me, but. All right, let's. Well, I think let's. I think let's wrap that up. Let's move on to segment two. Um, we wanted to. So obviously, I mentioned at the top of the show we're a keeper league. It's in the name. It's the whole point of the league. Um, so we're gonna go to keeper breakdowns and talk about who we think people are keeping, uh, what situations there are, who is the best keepers, who is the worst keepers. But first, I want to give everyone a listening who's listening a little background on what a keeper is and, and how it all works, just so you understand what the heck we're talking about when we go through this. Um, So quick little background. Every team can keep two players from the previous year's roster, and you're able to keep the same player for two years maximum. Uh, If you keep a player, you lose the draft pick they were drafted in the previous year. For example, Kyle Pitts was a fifth-round pick last season. If he were one of the two players kept by Top Cheese this year, Top Cheese wouldn't have a fifth-round pick in this year's draft. Kyle Pitts' fifth-round pick last year, if you keep him, Lose your first round or lose your fifth round pick. So the value and where a player is being kept is almost, you know, is important as the player himself. Because if Kyle Pitts is a first round pick, you could draft Derrick Henry. You know, you, you might not. You probably you want to keep him. Um, so as I mentioned, you can only keep, play, keep a player for two years max. So if a player is on their second year being kept, the draft pick you lose jumps up a year. If Pitts is kept this year by Top Cheese, you lose your fifth round pick, as I mentioned. But if he bails out next, if he balls out next season, you want to keep him again. You would lose your fourth round pick in 2023, and then he has to go back to the draft and isn't be able to kept by Top Cheese because of the two year maximum rule. And that is why this year we have names such as Derrick Henry and Dalvin Cook in the draft because they are kept two years max and they're not able to be kept again. Um, I'm not sure if you guys want to hop in and clarify anything that. Yeah. I, no, I don't want to clarify anything, but I do. People are always ask me, like, redraft versus keeper versus dynasty. And the reason I like our keeper format is because I, lo- I love redraft and I love dynasty. The reason I like our keeper format is you get a little mixture of both. Like like you said, the pool, the draft pool is loaded, so it's not mm-hmm. full of dynasty, obviously. We're only keeping guys, two guys. Um, and I like dynasty, like I said, but it's not full of dynasty, and the draft's loaded. So, and I, for fantasy, for me, I think the draft is like, Probably the best part of the year. It's my most fun. Kind of the whole reason I like the keeper format over the dynasty format. I'm not opposed to dynasty. I want to be in a dynasty league, but I don't know. That's my two cents there. Yeah, I I, I personally agree with that as well. And, I mean, it keeps the the dynasty. I mean, it's more strategy than dynasty, too, because dynasty, you can just fucking freaking keep the whole roster. Uh, Keeper league, you have to figure out who you want to keep, and that's almost like part of the draft process. So I, I agree with that as well how much value they have like literally how much value they have like say yeah just Jefferson, Knight Brown. you got just literally how much value they have just like yeah. Yeah. should we sit around the no, fire and just talk value for two hours <laughs> just, just literally it's just literally all about value <laughs> it's, 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 that's why it's so much better than the dynasty league because like you have to pick I don't even guys. know if I can go it's not so much better but that's I kind of like no, Dynasty too. That's, <laughs> no, that's no, a whole different challenge. Fuck, fuck <laughs> Dynasty leagues. You keep two guys and you gotta pick their best value. What's their best value? <laughs> so we'll discuss it. And another little fuck. tidbit about this league is we're, we're still non PPR standard, which is like kind of a big talking point these days. Every every league I know, almost every yeah, league I know right. is PPR. I think it's PPR. Yeah. Thanks for mostly- I'm non- most PPR. leagues I'm most leagues I've been in is like you get like a bonus if you get a hundred yards receiving or a hundred yards rushing or if you get to two hundred you get another bonus oh, wow. like we don't we're not in it like it's not like that here. yeah no yeah, we're, we're old super school. old school. I mean we've all been playing years and years it's gritty it's, it's no yeah like, it's gritty like, no gimmicks line up your verse mine let's play fantasy football you're not getting you're not getting a freaking full point for a reception that goes for zero yards. You got to play football and get some yards. You know. No. We could have a whole yeah. conversation on PPR. <laughs> My, I mean, I. Well, yeah, we could say that for another day. I'm a half point PPR I, guy. I really have to rely on one, but this, this league's not our league, our, league, our league is very old school. It really is. Yeah, like, this one. Like every, like every week's just a grind. Like. 
no yard or no PPR, none of that crap. It's every week to grind. It's an exhausting time. season. Play <laughs> a full schedule and keep it again. It's too <laughs> exhausting. It's a lot of wear and tear. Just wake up sore. <laughs> Bob, I mean, I'm setting my. Or speaking about stuff like that, I'm setting my alarm at like 3 a.m. on the waiver wire day, trying to wake up and grab on the guys who weren't claimed up. Dude, we all, we all are, so, not just you. If, you're, yeah. if you have a guy hurt, too, or like a couple guys out, like you can't you can't scrape together guys off waivers in this league like you can in like a full point and hope they catch awesome. five balls or something. Awesome. Like, it's been. Hopefully you hit a hit. Yeah, Hopefully you hit a home run in Khalil Herbert. <laughs> like, literally. <it's> me. <laughs> hit a home run. Like. He was a decent player. I wouldn't say that was a home run hit by any means. I mean, it's probably hot off the keeper, but what? yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, so let's let's move over to the best keeper situations. I want to I want to go through everyone's top three. Um, okay. I guess you can do it in order. You can do whatever way you want. You, you I don't know if it's just a top three, if it's a one. Two and three doesn't really matter. Um, I'll go first here. Um, so I think the the best keepers, the team with the best keepers in the league is the Degenerates. Um, he's got Justin De- Jefferson in the ninth round and T Higgins in the eleventh round. That's insane value for both those guys. I mean Justin Jeff. What about Elijah Mitchell? Uh yeah, I don't see him getting kept. Um. <laughs> 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 Either way, talking about his um, if you can take yeah, some of the guys he's not going to be keeping and throw them on other, other rosters, they'd be keeping for sure. Like Diggs. Stephon Diggs in the third, yeah, yeah, exactly. Elijah sure. Mitchell, would- um, Eli Mitchell could be capped too. I mean, I I wouldn't totally rule that out. I would agree that those are probably his keeps, but I, yeah. I mean, if he came out and said he's keeping Eli Mitchell in the last round. I mean, that's just pretty. If good he, yeah, but if he doesn't keep T Higgins in eleventh, it's like what do you do? But no. I think he's keeping Elijah Mitchell. I just, I don't know. I no way. He, I think he's keeping There's just, I don't see it, man. Really? Why? Why? Because I'm, taking, keep, I'm uh, keeping Elijah Diggs over Elijah Mitchell. Mitchell. That's why. Like, I don't trust Rock. You're keeping Diggs? Elijah Mitchell, yes. I'm taking the better football I don't know. I, I think. Oof, I think Eli Mitchell had a pretty good year for him. Eli Mitchell did have a good year, but yeah. Key Higgins won him a champ, won him a ring. He's getting Joe Burrow back. Jamar yeah. Chase is going to get a lot more attention. And Elijah Mitchell, I don't I mean, Elijah, I like Elijah Mitchell as a player, but they're getting Jeff Wilson Jr. back, right? Or not Jeff Wilson Jr. Raheem Mostert back. I, I don't even think Jeff Wilson Jr. is on the Raheem, roster. Mo, Raheem Mostert. No, Raheem Mostert. Raheem Mostert. Is Raheem Mostert. No, he's gone. Oh, Raheem Mostert. Just drafted is he on Miami? Yeah. yeah Mostert is on Miami. Miami now. I don't know why we're even like, 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 saying Mostert like, in Sam Brown. Yeah. Eli Mitchell's like, the solo bell cow there. That, like, they're yeah. making that. I'm not, sold, I'm not sold Mitchell's why? the bell cow. You drafted a third or fourth rounder. You was the bell cow all last year. He was last year, but they had a lot of injuries. And... They love them. They do like them. You know how valuable running backs are in this league. You'd be dying for that key, Bandits. You'd be dying for that Yeah, right. Yeah, and, and you can they, have the discussion they do, they do running back. Wilson. They did re-sign Jeff Wilson Jr., just so you guys know. All right. So, my. Oh, yeah. He's super good. Go ahead. <laughs> my, my, uh, my second team with the keeper is the Google Bandits. Um. And, and, let me, and, let me, and let me tell you why. Puts himself in two. When you have the best keeper in the entire league, you have the best player in the entire league being kept in the second round. I don't care what way you slice it up. The best player in the entire league is being kept in the second round. And whoever has that, they don't have to keep anyone else. they got to be in the conversation with top, top keepers in the league. And even more so, Josh Jacobs in the third round is good value. Oh, uh, God. Jo- yes, oh no, yes, okay. he is. Josh Jacobs right now oh, is like 38th it. on ESPN's non-PP overall. What? And with what, 24 guys I don't being know. kept, I mean, maybe they're not all in front of him. And he's kept what? The uh, 12, 12, 24 plus 9, 34. Wait, what, in the what, draft. what number did you say he was? I mean, it's, it's very good value still. It's very good value, especially when I have projected 10 – of the top 15 running backs are gone by the sixth pick. So running backs get thin here quick. So I, I think Josh Jacobs is a good keeper, but my point being Jonathan Taylor, second round, I could keep freaking Justin Carter, 
whatever, Daniel Carlson. I don't give a fuck about his name. The guy was horrible for the Vikings. I don't. You think I care about that no, guy's no, name? Daniel Carlson was. Let me step in here for a second. Daniel Carlson was like the band that's like second best player last year. That wasn't a very good team. A lot of luck on the way. The team who had the second most points place. for in the league and who got a first round bye and won their division wasn't a good team. All right, fine. I think Daniel Carlson was the second, your second best player up here. Last I year. think. You got luck out and banged up by your kicker in multiple, multiple weeks. I think that the Google Bandits need to sit down and really think about Dawson Knox in the 15th. I think they really need to sit down uh, and think about if that's a little more valuable than Josh Jacobs in the third. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to sit back. It is because I think I think Josh Jacobs is a fucking third rounder in the regular draft. Or maybe a let, second. Let me step up here. Rounder, maybe. Let me step in here. I'm, I have an ESPN cheat sheet in front of me. I'm going to just look up where Jacobs actually is. He's 51th oh overall in 9 PPI. He's, he's RB20. That's outdated. Just look so I don't know new, where. Look at the new one, one five days ago. Outdated. <laughs> at the no, updated. it's not. He's, he's RB20. So you can keep whoever you want. I, I'm not going to sit here and talk about that's great value. I do agree that running backs will be thin. But, I mean, target John, Target's Johnson um, is better value. Than I agree. Six, but you do. You, I agree. Um. I shouldn't be giving you these freebies. I can let you mess up your keeper situation like you do every other year. But <laughs> Targus Johnson is more value than Jacobs. Um, but go ahead. Our bees will be thin. Um, you're, and your keepers are not top three in this league. Not anywhere close. They're more towards Josh bottom Jacobs three than they would be top 20. You are looking at the wrong list, young, young man. And he is 39th overall and 19th running back. Don't try that on me. I have it right here. Me? <laughs> I have it too. Can you send me that list offline, maybe, and I, I can try to reconcile the list? I mean, whatever. Let's not argue. Let's not argue with the ESPN right. list. But I think you're looking at PPR. <laughs> So who's your third? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So you have you have the Dgens and the Google um, Bandits. Third, I have uh, Hot Sauce Football. I have CD Lamb in the fourth and, and Jamar Chase in the fifth. Um, those are obviously really good keepers, but I mean they're not about the Bandits because ru- I mean running backs win you this league, and you know those are. Those are really good keepers and, and very good value, but that's not above having do the best know? player in all of fantasy do, football in the second round in a running back. back. I might I might have to step in here for one of the first times and say I don't know if running backs are in the league really huh. necessarily. Example no, top cheese. I haven't have huh? an example. You don't want to clarify, but are the DGens? Yeah, what, well, what's your what's your example? Did, what were what's, what were the uh, DGens the last running year, backs? DGens like, running backs were Michael Carter and Elijah Mitchell, and I would. And, that, and they had yeah. the best wide receivers, tight end, and quarterback tandem by far. They had no running backs, and they won the league last year. So, I mean. Yeah, no, no RB strategy. strategy. He did go the it new worked. It can work. It can work. You can do it anyway. I agree. I think I think in today's age in fantasy football, we're trending more towards that with all these, like, split duo running back systems. 100%. Um, you want a top? Yeah, and how about, yeah. Like top guys. And I think wide receivers – are kind of taken over in that since I know Mel went zero RB strategy last year. I know he did. I remember he made that clear at the draft. Yeah. No, and think about it like this too. Think about it like this too, because you got you're wasting val- you're wasting your uh, picks in like the top three rounds on running backs. Like one of them fucking busts his knee, and you got and then you like you don't have him, and running backs go down so much. And, the, other and position. that's an I argument that. that's fair, but when looking at keepers. And you have a, the best, the number one overall pick who's a running back in a touchdown premium league where you don't get points per reception versus two wide receivers in the fourth and fifth round. I'm taking the best pick in the draft, the number one pick in the draft in the second round every time over CeeDee Lamb in the fourth, personally. I, I mean, I'm taking Josh Jacob or Jonathan Taylor over CeeDee Lamb or Jamar Chase in that situation, personally. Yeah. I'll go, yeah. Okay. Okay, the and then, so, that's, and then, that's the big thing. Dude. You're keeping Josh Jacobs. That's not a very good keep. That's an average keep. Probably below average. Down no, there. it's not. I think it's. We're not going back to the bandits. We're not going back to the bandits. No, no, you, no, 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 no. You can't say something's <laughs> below average. You can't say something's below average value wise when he's being kept way above, way behind where he'd get drafted. Like if he's getting kept behind yeah. where he get drafted, then it's Too a good, it's good keep. <laughs> My internal mocks say that Josh Jacobs would be 
He's, he's probably going second. early third round in this league. Maybe maybe late second. That, I think it's only a I, few picks and, behind. <laughs> and I and I think that's fair. But like I said, we've seen ten of the top fifteen running backs are going to be gone after the sixth pick. And if Josh Jacobs is RB nineteen after the sixth pick, he's a ninth. He's a ninth running back left on the board. And we know how quick backs go in this league and how desperate people are for him. So. Yeah, and I mean, you're keeping him in the third round. That's pretty high. I mean, you're keeping him right around where he could be. Not, no, not right around. Yeah, was... Definitely behind where he would be drafted. But. Good keep. All right, we're just but, <laughs> all right, but I think we should go to someone else's top three. Arm, or, uh, Army, I'll go to you for your top three keepers, if you have it. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to recap on this because I think DJs have the best. Okay. Close. I don't okay. even think it's close. Obviously, with Jefferson and T. Higgins. And like I said, I'll clarify again. I said it already. I think if you could argue T. Higgins, like he's in a he's a wide receiver two on his team, like maybe you don't want to keep him. Stephon Diggs is there in the third. Elijah Mitchell in the fifth. Like he has options for days. He's the best situation by far, in my in my opinion. Um, yeah, he does have the best options. He has tons of options. Um, <laughs> I think. Sadly, I really think hot sauce football has good situations as well. He's hot in my sauce. top three. There we go. With, with Jamar Chase and CD Lamb, those are in the fifth and the fourth. Those are good. Yeah. Like these, are, these are these guys are good calls. Like they're getting 160 targets each this year. Like we all know that. Everybody in the world knows that. These guys are football players, and I'm all for keeping good football players. I actually yeah, like, have a. T- what are you gonna say? No, I said he, he does have good keepers. There's no denying that. And I actually have a tie for third, so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a little uh, two team in here. I'm gonna give Team Good U actually as third, what? As third, third best, tied for third, tied for third. I, I, yeah. Um, and I'm only saying this maybe because they're my boys. You've got Debo in the seventh, which is the third best keep in the league, in my opinion, personally. Agreed. And. Uh, and I think Damian Harris in the eighth is his, yeah. well. I guess there are others at the seventh this year too. So is one of those in the sixth? Clarify. I think it's the eighth. Damian okay. Harris. Damian Harris. Okay. In the I, th- I mean, I think Damian Harris is a good keep personally. I mean, he it's a touch like you said. This isn't PPR. This is touchdown dependent yardage. This guy gets twenty five carries a game and he gets all the goal line work for the Patriots. This guy's a good non PPR running back. Like. I just believe that. I totally agree. He's a solid RB2, yeah, Dale. Like, totally and agree. you're getting him in the eighth. Like, talk, dude, Josh Jacobs not... or Damian Harris, this is a coin flip for me, personally. Like, I honestly think that. And you're ta- you're keeping him in the third, yeah. Google oh, Bandit. So it's like... That's not a coin flip. Damian Harris has a lot more committee work in New England. We saw with he averaged Ramondre like 20 Stevenson last year. We saw with Ramondre Stevenson sure. last year. He has a lot more committee work in New England, and you never know what Bill Belichick's going to do. Yeah, they run the ball a lot up there. but 100%, that's true. But you all, I so if that. you don't like Damian Harris, he could keep A.J. Dillon. Talk about goal line work. Mm-hmm. Like, Jesus Christ, this guy might. And, nice and, and if I can step in, if I can step in really quick here, I agree, Dame Harris, good keep, solid RB2. Um, Ramondre Stevenson definitely worries me. As I'd be, I feel like even more so, I'll be more of a committee this year. So that does worry me. Wow, that could even be a key option for you. It'd be better value than Vegas, to be honest. But it, going to AJ Dillon, the big thing with AJ Dillon is even if I'm thinking like out even further in the future, because this is this is Aaron Jones last year as a Packer, and next year you might see AJ Dillon as like a top two round pick. So I'm thinking next year if I can keep him too. I might be getting a top two round pick in like the eighth next year, so it's definitely on my radar. Haven't made any decisions, sure. but that's definitely Dude. something I love about AJ Dillon. And he's almost playing a committee with Aaron Jones these days. He was really solid. I think the Bandits learned the hard way last year. I'll get AJ Dillon was in the year. I mean, this, I guy's actually, a, this guy's a bull horse. He's so good. I, pref- I definitely prefer, if I were TGY, I definitely prefer, I think I would prefer AJ Dillon over uh, Damian Harris for sure, to be honest. I don't. Then Debo Samuel is like a top three keep in the league, Dale. Thanks for giving me shout out. <laughs> so, so I'm going to give my rank, just a quick rank. Jefferson's the best keep in the ninth. I think the second best keep is Cooper Cup in the fifth, personally. And I think the third best keep is Debo Samuel in the seventh. And I think the, and I think the fourth best keep is J- Jonathan Taylor in the second. I think you have the fourth. <laughs> I agree, Dale. My rankings are all down. So, 
So naturally, I put myself tied, myself, the Army, tied with TG, or Team Good U for tied for third. Cooper Cup in the fifth is my best keep by a long shot. He might be the best keep in the league, but I think it's Justin Jefferson. Um, and my and my yeah. second option isn't, like, fantastic by any means. I mean, I have, I have DeAndre Swift in the third, which is better than Josh Jacobs in the third. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. Um, I don't, and, but I disagree sure. with Jonathan Taylor being fourth in the best keepers in the league. That all about okay. No, and, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. I'm, I'm not. I'm a late pick. I took fourth last year. I lost the dot in the third, so I have the eighth pick, right? Ninth pick. Ninth pick. Sorry. So Alvin yeah. Kamara is Gonzo. Alvin Kamara is a top five pick in this league. So I have Alvin Kamara in the first if I want to keep him as my ninth pick. I also have DeAndre Swift. So I like my options. I obviously have Cooper Cup. So I put, I put tied for third, but Team Good you. That's the end of my list. Yeah. Dales, I would I would potentially give you the edge um, over me if I had to. What is that? I had to pick. <laughs> is Dales an application for the league office it. getting pushed through? What's going on? I'm not in the league <laughs> office. Jeez, I just Some like good keeps. Normal, guys? I'm just a good keeps guy. I would give you three. I'd give myself four. I totally agree with. In, I agreed with your ranking of like the top keepers in the league on an individual player basis. I totally agree. I think you're spot on. You think Jonathan Taylor is the fourth best keeper in the league? Yes, absolutely. Wow! All right, hot sauce. Your top three. Your top three teams. We're talking. We're talking pound. When I say that, Jack, just but we're talking pound for pound value wise. Yes, too. but I just think the value of Jonathan Taylor, even if he was the first round, in my opinion, even if he was late and late in the first round, I almost think that's. I almost would rather have that than freaking Justin Jefferson or Debo Samuel. Cup, I really Cup. would. I really would. Just, just judging by because no, who else I, can you get? I, I, who else can you get for him in the second round? I mean, Mike Evans. I mean, like think about what you're giving up. You understand for him. what's giving up in the fifth round? We're drop. We're dropping like. We're dropping like yeah. Rashad Bateman in the fifth round. I get to keep Cooper exactly. Cup. And those guys. I mean, you can pick sleepers down there. And I okay, mean, well, just, Jesus. I mean, you can say that about everything. You're right? just talking about Mike Evans. What? Though. Yeah. yeah. You were just talking about Mike Evans. Mike Evans is way better than like a potential guy that could like hit be a home run Correct. in the late rounds. I agree. Correct. But I'm talking about the give and take between Jonathan Taylor versus Debo Samuel. Obviously Jonathan Taylor is a better fantasy player than Debo Samuel or Cooper or Cooper Cup in the non PPR. I actually wait, 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 I don't even know if that's true on Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup oh, so is you, like, you'd rather no, you'd have it. Cooper Cup over Jonathan Taylor in a non PPR? No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that, but Cooper Cup is the number two non PPR player on my list on the rankings. I'm pretty sure. But, but, yeah, he's number but he two. Got, We're talking about the number two overall player in the league. Jonathan way. Taylor beat him by like 40 points last year. It wasn't even close. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. Thank you. That's exactly what I'm saying. 40 the points. So 40 points Taylor. is close. Well, yeah. That's two. That's two big games. That's two weeks that like he had a bigger game than Cooper Cup. Like. It was, Give me Cooper Cup in the fifth over Jonathan Taylor in the second all day, every day. I don't think I really have to argue. I wouldn't. Not. <laughs> what about what about fucking Jettas in the ninth though? Like maybe I I'd consider that. That's number, I, agree with I don't know though. Like I'm not sold that I wouldn't have Taylor there. Like you don't like you can't you can't you can't get a Justin right. Jefferson, but you just Jonathan Taylor is so incredibly value valuable where you use as you can get another wide receiver in the six that can maybe you know get you 1200 1100 yards and and seven tucks but if you go for another running back you're gonna get like a you really can't... really you're gonna get a surefire stud in the second round a surefire stud in the second round you i should. don't agree with that but go ahead <laughs> did it <he? laughs> So, I can sit here and say, like, you might get a good player in the sixth or seventh or eighth round, but then I come out and say, you're going to get a really good player in the second, and it's like, I disagree with that. I, where's the logic in that? That doesn't make any sense. I don't think, I don't think, because I don't think you're, that's my point. I don't think you're guaranteed, to, you're especially not getting a, but then how can you're, 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 how can you're especially not getting a stud running back in the second round, not a stud, unless you try to hit a homer on a young guy. You, yeah, you can get. But how can your argument be then that you might get a good player in the ninth if you're saying you're not even going to get a good player in the second? No, that's my point. That 
You're not you're not getting a for sure fire any you're special that's exactly my point. You're especially not getting a for sure for sure fired guy anywhere. Like that's why I don't think that's why you're I think gonna, second, you're John really, Taylor in the second round is so valuable because you're not getting a for sure fire. You're getting a really there. good player in the second. You're getting a stud in the second. You drafted Jonathan what, Taylor in the third where, round. That's where we're disagreeing. I don't. That's what I'm trying to say. Exactly what you, you almost contradict yourself there. You're not getting. I don't think you're getting a first round fired stud in the second. In what world are we not getting a good player in the second? Well, round? <laughs> I, I, I appreciate the walk back between for sure stud and good player. I do appreciate that. Anyways, <laughs> hot sauce. You want to go your top three? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> well, okay, so you, you 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 can go before me. You can go before me, Sauce. I, what I will say is that I do not have yeah. rankings. Um, but what I do have is a, what I do have is a definite worst. I have a definite worst. I'm gonna go. To, I'm gonna go to you first on the next second. Yeah, I'll go worst. You, you guys highlighted everything. Out of All right, worst keeper situations. Evan, you said you had a little something something for this, so I'll let you go first, big dog. Yeah, so I mean, just during that last uh, segment, when when South when Sauce was talking about his uh, his top three, I was looking through the the keeper sheet, and before I said that there was a for sure worst, and I'm, I'm still sticking with that as my worst. But looking at some of these other situations, man, there's some yeah. bad ones out there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, I know I ain't in the top three, but I'm very happy okay. I'm not these guys. But uh, looking at and before I say anything, I just want to make it clear that, like, wh- who I'm about to talk about, he's actually one of my good friends, and you might not think so based on what I'm about to say about his keeper situation, but I actually have been very good friends with him for a long time, but oh my fucking God, what is Mr. I doing? <laughs> <laughs> wow, I think it's okay. You hate that one. I didn't see that coming. I'll be honest. I, thought you were I don't like that. I don't. I'm looking at. Also, first of all, also first of all, I might be. This might sound stupid, but why the fuck does everyone else have so many? Like, why does he have such a short list? Oh, I, How did I that can, happen? I can talk about that. He thought like, what did he do? He did something like really dumb. Like, he dropped like a ton of his players or something. Like at the end, or I don't know. There's a reason for that, though, and it's valid. Yeah, I mean, I mean, is he? I mean, is he keeping Brady? No, right? no dude. I think his. I think what he thinks, he's keeping Eckler he's for keeping sure. Keeping Eckler think. and Kelsey in the first um, and second round because they're both top, literally top ten players. I don't know. Yeah, no, I guess, I guess. Yeah, no, they're. It's not. It's not. Yeah, I don't know. Players with it's the value. bad. I think he's keeping Eckler and jo- Javante Williams. I, I think th- I think it's Eckler and Javante Williams as well. I, I mean, do too. If you if you th- just think about it this way, Snipes, Travis Kelsey will be the second overall pick in the second round, or Javante Williams will be the second to last pick in the third round, and they're right next to each other in the rankings. And I mean, I would go Williams if I were him. But I think his situation. <laughs> I hate Javante. I don't Williams, like him either. Way. I, that's why I think you come down. That's why the uh, Milbo Tuesday. You come down to. Yeah, I'm not too high on Javante Williams either. Right? Melvin Gordon's still there, and he like he played a lot last year. No, and he stepped out and said he's gunning he's gonna, for that yeah. starting job. Yeah, like he's got a lot left in the tank, dude. True. That might be a true split still. Um, so I wouldn't be too yeah. that he's back if I was hand, but Melvin Gordon was running for like sixty yard touchdowns last year. Like No, he had a solid year. The guy had some bounce in his step. I think yeah, I also I think, quiet also the the quiet guys keepers suck too, I will say. Yeah, that's the worst one. Yeah, wait, let me look at quiet guys keepers. They're not they're great. The worst. I think he's got some No I wouldn't say they're the worst. The I would say hey, that's the worst. But is Cordero? Is Cordero might be a good yeah, exactly. easy Cordero. Like, Cordero. Cordero. I don't know. Cordero has some value for sure. Cordero has some value for sure. Elijah Moore will have a little value, not great. Brandon Cooks probably has his most value. I think it is. Um, he actually. Is Cooks a- Brandon Cooks had a quietly good year last year. Brandon yeah. Cooks is actually uh, Brandon Cooks, Cooks, in the, bad Cooks in the eighth round, right? How would how would Keenan Allen have gone? Brandon, Brandon, Brandon Cooks a stud. I'm not doing it. I promise. I'm not doing well. that. <laughs> I'm not calling him a stud. Okay, well, then, he finally had a good year. Dude, it's a bad situation. <laughs> but how about Keenan Allen? There's a time to be an option for him, right? I mean, that's got. 
there's there's some value there. My internal mocks say there's some value on Keenan Allen I mean, in the third, but I still I prefer, I prefer Cordero in the fifteenth yeah. and Cook. I think I go Cook and Keenan. I don't I don't know if I trust Cordero. I don't know if I trust that. In, is it fifteen? Yeah, round? I mean, yeah, he's yeah. like RB twenty seven. Like you Keenan like Allen's Mariota? a for sure fired stud. Yeah, but he's a fifteenth rounder. Like, look at the I, look at the names in the fifteenth round at the end of every draft. That's true. That is true. But you can get Keenan Allen where a spot where you can't get him. I mean, you get a for sure fired stud on your team in the third round to be a wide receiver one for you. Yeah, I don't know. Can you see yeah. Mariota? So we're calling Patterson. Well, well, time out. Let me let me comment on something that Jack just said there. He called Keenan Allen a surefire stud, but he wouldn't say anyone in the second round was a good player, like a stud or anything. So. Again, Jack contradicting himself. I don't know if any, everyone caught that out there. Evan, I hope you did. As a third-round <laughs> keeper, yes. <laughs> he is a first-round player. But, yeah, I mean, my guy's situation is not great. But, Evan, did you have any more names you wanted to go to? or Because I don't think even the worst, um, the worst keeper has been mentioned yet. Um, yeah, I said Mr. I, the quiet guy. You know, look at I mean, another thing for me with Mr. Eyes is just, like, I'm a big Kelsey guy, but I, I don't know what it is. And like, it's just bias, it's just personal bias, but I just don't like Austin Eckler either. Like, I just don't like him as a person. <laughs> but, uh, that's beside the point. Big bubble player. <laughs> um, yeah. Dic- dictatorship, dictatorship that's as well. Um, that's gotta be the worst keeper. That's the worst keeper. Yeah. I mean, I, I really, I really wish I could have had more time to give it a th- more thorough look, but yeah, those those three for me. Who, who, so who's Todd even keeping? Like out of that mess, I think he's keep. I think Moon is surefire there, um, and then I think Mixon might be a second best bet or Schultzy, I guess maybe. But I I lean Mixon and I, and that's not. I think he has. I think he has to keep Mixon. He's not going to get a running back that good mm-hmm. and. I mean, yeah. In the late, in the late. Yeah, will, it's not. It's not worth it to give up, to de- significantly downgrade on running back and get like a fucking a freaking David Montgomery instead of Mixon just so you can hold on what to about, Dalton Schultz. Like, is that really worth wow. it? I don't think so. What about Saquon Barkley? Like, who's like? Would you rather have Saquon Barkley or Joe Mixon? Um, I'm gonna go oh, Mixon there, but I'm taking Barkley. I'm going Mixon. It's not that really? close. Yeah, I don't think. I don't, think I don't either. Close. I'm I'm Mixon, not that close either. I don't know. I saw. Uh, I'm really low on Saquon Barkley, but can I want to dive in here with a tidbit? Speaking of Saquon Barkley, when Jack took him, like, what did he take him? Like first overall last year? Six, he six, did that. Six, he, why are you shaking? He stood up. He stood six. up in the middle of the draft <laughs> and said that Saquon Barkley will be a Google banner for the next three years, and like. <laughs> <laughs> he everybody at the draft for giving him Saquon Barkley. Like, unbelievable. And now he's, he's <laughs> cutting him loose after year one. He had to. I haven't cut him loose yet. I haven't cut him loose yet. He could what? still be a Google Bandit for three more years. Yeah, and, he, he yeah, glass. sorry, I didn't know the guy's ankles are made of glass, too. It's ridiculous. Please. Well, that, hey, that comes back to what please I said earlier, Saquon man. Barkley. I mean, please keep saying uh, Barkley. Running back. Agreed, Evan. Good. Yeah, well, I, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's that is somewhat true, Evan. But but if you get the sure, if you get a stud running back that you know plays most of the year, I mean, that can be a league winner in many cases, as we know. I saw I saw like a picture on Instagram of Saquon Barkley like doing his workouts and like he has like this huge six pack and like. Said it's the healthiest he's ever been. I'm like, dude, no, I I want Saquon Barkley this year. What is it? What what pick? I can guarantee I you that Saquon. Pick? I might take him at the seventh pick. Like, if I, if he's there, you're not going to do that. I, guarantee, I can guarantee you Saquon Barkley had a six pack last year coming in the year. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is different. This is like this guy is. That would be a flashy signature yeah, hot sauce pick six. if you got him there. Like, I got like, like, Saquon, <laughs> Jamar, and CD. Like, that's my core. <laughs> my QB is probably yeah, like Trey Lance. My QB is Trey Lance. It's on. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a massive reach if you take Saquon at seven. No, I no, I no, I, 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 I got my eyes on him. That's for sure. Saquon, Saquon at seven, but Josh Jacobs late in the third. It's horrible. What are we doing here today? Wow. <laughs> I mean, 
I don't know who that was directed at. Those are both. Or Saquon's a horrible. That was directed at Sauce, obviously. The guy yeah, talking to Saquon. It's Saquon's not up. though. It's not though. I think this this might be the year that he breaks out. I think he might be the rushing leader. That's my dark horse, rushing leader. Like leads the league in yards in rushing yards. He plays every game. He's healthy. Everything. I, I promise. Like everything. Everything well, lame. The, the problem with Saquon Barkley is more up the Giants and their horrible or O line than him. I honestly think Andy Ram super timid last year. You can just tell when you watch the games. I remember the Google Bandits had to come out and make a formal announcement that he was running timid in like the middle of Thursday night football game <laughs> once. I don't. He's like, I don't still shaking off an game. injury. All right. He's still shaking off an injury, man. All right, let's let's try to keep this moving a little bit. Um. So I think we kind of, I mean, anyone else for the worst keepers? I'm, I'll, I'll mention, just because I want to touch on everyone's keepers, so let's maybe talk about Larry Wheels here for a second. Um, definitely not the worst keepers in the league, but James Conner in the 8th and Michael Pittman in the 11th, you know, that's solid. and Solid val- value for both guys, but I'm not, like, sold. Like, I'm not going to come in the season sold on those yet. Like, I'm not sold. I'll, I'll just put it that way. I don't think they're elite. I, I agree. I think I know where you're going with that, Jack. And, I mean, if you looked at, like, a ranking sheet right now, you'd think, like, that's super good value. Yes. But I'm just not sold on James Conner. <laughs> I'm not sold <laughs> I mean, I know he's, like, again, I'm just going to refer to the, the ESPN sheet because that's everything, something that everyone has. He's, like, RB. He's RB11, so he's super yeah. high, 19th overall. So, but I'm, I just, I would never take, I don't want him 19th overall. I'm looking for someone. If it's a redraft and I'm taking James Conner 19th overall, I might as well just donate the money and go home, man. Like, what are you doing? Like, 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 what are we doing here? I think his big thing, he scored like a ton of touchdowns last year. And that just like has regression written all over it. But I don't know. Larry Wheels is decent keep. I think other guys that we haven't talked about, Jack. Not to not to steal his fire, but money team, money team. I think as decent keeps. Not I wouldn't say closer to bottom three than top three, maybe. But it'll probably be Mark Andrews and at Hollywood. five. I would say Mark Brown, Brown, or yeah, Hollywood Brown at seven. Maybe Antonio Gibson at third. I guess. Yeah. Might be some value there. Probably more keep than Josh Jacobs. I don't know. It might be close, but. Keeping that um, Jake, can I step in really quick? I'm just I'm just surprised you didn't say you didn't even mention uh, Devin that dude Singletary in the ninth round. I was just wondering why. <laughs> Honestly, dude. Man, my internal my, like Singletary kind of took over that job in Buffalo late in the year. They relied on him heavily, but I I don't. Devin Singletary was that dude for a period of time, but I think that period of time is over. He was never that dude. He's, no he was that dude. Never, He's never that dude. That's just why. You know okay, why am I not sold on Hollywood Brown in the eighth know. over over Antonio Gibson? Or, Antonio and, and, Gibson. I like Hollywood team. Brown. I think no, so too. And not. also, Absolutely and also not. on that, I'm not. I'm not what if I got? I'm looking at. I don't know. I'm not so – Antonio Gibson might be a third-round pick in this draft. Yeah. Hollywood Brown's the number one option in Arizona with Kyler Murray throwing the ball. DeAndre yeah, Hopkins is only for six weeks, CG. And this is old college quarterback. They, Ant- Ant- Antonio Gibson, like I guess he's only RB22, but – but one. Antonio Gibson did not have a good year last year. I think Money Team was very frustrated with Antonio Gibson last year. There were some high hopes. Yeah, well, everyone's expecting to be the next McCaffrey. So, I mean, if you if you keep him late in the – Jeez, I, I, was not, I, I personally was not expecting – I personally was not accept, or expecting Antonio Gibson being the next McCaffrey, but – Well, I yeah, think – Yeah, he didn't have – I mean, season. I think some people were, but – um. Just a, just I mean, a, find me who was so I can just a, just a th- <laughs> just a, the guys, everyone who's drafting in the freaking top twelve and full points, top fifteen and full points. Yeah. All right, so but I don't but know. just a thought. Deshaun Watson's gonna get suspended, but Jarvis Landry in the eighth. Mm-hmm. I mean, that if if Deshaun Watson plays football, that's almost more attractive than than Hollywood Brown in the seventh. Dude, I'm mean, pretty. I hate to do this to you, but maybe I'm totally out. Jarvis Landry isn't even on the Browns. No, he's not. No. Are you sure? I thought he was on the Saints. Saints. Uh, Jarvis Landry is on the Saints. Yeah, he's on the Saints. Come on, Jack. God. Cut that clip out. Cut that clip out. 
Okay. 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 I want that in. That's all. That's obviously that's out. out. That's out, yeah. You <laughs> that's obviously clipped out. Jarvis, I mean, Jarvis Landry hit some is Jameis Winston down in New Orleans, though. So, I mean, I think, <laughs> See, I think, that, I think that in the eighth oh. could be decent. Oh, oh, why do you like See, I like Hollywood in the seven way better than that. Yeah, I'd probably, got his old probably college, at the end of the eighth. His old college quarterback. Like, he, they got chemistry. Like, oh, no. Jarvis Landry. <laughs> baby, baby stole Acres like a few weeks before the season ended. He picked up Acres and put him on his bench, and that's going to turn out to be one of the better values in the league. Um, they want him to be the guy in Los Angeles. He's getting twenty touches a game in the playoffs, yeah. and coming off that Achilles injury, he's he's the guy in Los Angeles. I think that's really, really, really good value. Yeah, I think he's the guy on. too. I think he's the guy too. What's but that? I'm worried. Well. Cam Akers is a good keep in the 15th round. I, I do think that. But with the way that guy runs and his injury history, I mean, you better cuff that. You better – Jesus Christ, you better cuff that. <laughs> please cuff – please. Yeah, I, it's a good – Please cuff that guy. And then <laughs> – <laughs> He's going to just go – yeah, he might have to go full cuff mode, but that's fine. Then <laughs> Baby also has Judy the, there – who I think I'm like high on Judy this year just because with Russell Wilson now. I mean, I want a piece of Denver's offense now. I feel like they could be good yeah. this year. Yeah, but, with Russell Wilson there, hell yeah, everyone wants a piece of Denver's offense. Um, it's but the best division in football. I guess, I guess it it kind of goes. I guess we can kind of talk about. Have we covered everyone? I mean, yeah, I think we have. No, no, I want to. I want to touch cheese. cheese. I want to touch oh, a cheese. A cheese has, well. Or net in the sixth round is like elite keep there. Right? That's an elite. Like, that's, that's a really. Nice. Let's let's transition to segment two here because cheese and baby are basically going to be the main focal point of segment two. L- oh, lot okay. of implications. I, I really like um, just because we'll talk about cheese's keepers oh. first, just because I think where cheese ends up in the lottery is going to affect his keepers greatly. I think. I mean, I mean, maybe Correct. not, maybe Correct. not, but. Um, I see. Maybe, I mean, yeah. So, I guess yeah. I'll explain the lottery yeah. really quickly to the audience. Um, every year we hold a draft lottery for the bottom six teams in the league, um, or any of the teams that didn't make the playoffs, same thing. Um, six ping pong balls, and we pick six through one. So, six pick gets picked first. It's not weighted like the NBA or anything. So, first pick doesn't have 35%. Everyone has one six chance of getting the first overall pick. Everyone has one six chance of getting the... Uh, Six overall pick. So, all right. Let's, with that being said, let's talk about let's talk about Cheese's keepers because if Cheese gets six overall, well, should we maybe recap? We'll just talk about his keepers first. So, I mean, Leonard Fournette in the sixth, Jalen Waddle in the eighth, Kyle Pitts in the fifth. He's got options, dude. Christian McCaffrey in the first. The first. I have a lot yeah. of options. Yeah. I think, and I know no one, I know no one else would mention this, but I'm telling you what, fellas, you got to swing for the fences in fantasy sometimes because you're trying to win. You're not trying to stay out of last. You're trying to I take first. Marking, you're not. You're not shooting. Not Kadarius Tony. Kadarius fucking Tony, dude. Loves him. Like... Hey, hey! If you go type in Kadarius Tony highlights on YouTube, it blows my fucking shit away. How talented this guy is. I'm, st- I'm telling you right now, he's Tyree Kill 2.0. Go watch his Is fucking highlights. I, I, I'm, I I'm not guaranteeing. I appreciate. I'm not guaranteeing a keep, but I appreciate just saying. the Kadarius Tony hype train. I do appreciate it. He's not on my radar for your keeps. I think Fournette's one for sure. for sure. Like not even close. He's getting kept for sure, no matter what happens in the lottery. And like that's a weak keep territory too. I'm high on Fournette. I don't think Dale's is for some reason, but. I'm high on Fournette. That's a lot. And then maybe you keep CMC if he's like yeah. thick in the lottery. But it's again, you're weighing that risk of that risk reward with keeping Jalen Waddle in the eighth compared to the McCaffrey in the first round and like giving up that first round. <laughs> Gotta waddle it yeah, out, if baby. You, <laughs> if you get if he gets five or six, he has to basically say, Okay, will I give up CMC to have, you know, a Fournette in the Swift, because that's maybe who would get there at five or six. Swift, Swift. maybe. Who's Swift? Swift is getting kept. DeAndre Swift. He might, he, might, he might get kept. Okay, or Kamara. I mean, or Chubb. You know, I guess the point is yeah. one of those guys. Yeah. He's saying, yeah. I will give up CMC to keep Waddle and 
or to have instead have Waddle and Chubb because Waddle. I think that's how you have to think about it because you, you it yeah is. essentially you're you're because you get the extra keep Waddle or Fournette or whoever his for sure or his other second keeper and, would be. and then you you also gain the the fifth or sixth round or sixth overall pick which might be like a Swift or a Chubb or a Kamara so I mean it's just that's just a decision he's faced with. No, you're you're absolutely right. It's I mean, that. That. Um, baby, Go ahead. Baby's in a baby's in a similar situation too. I know you wanted to transition him. No, yeah. Or let's just keep moving along. Baby's got Najee Harris. I could keep in like what in the first, mm-hmm. right? First. And that would be say if he gets six pick, Najee Harris isn't going to be that pick six. So then he's weighing that. Does he want Judy in the seventh, or does he want Najee Harris and? It's that same trade option. Ex- exactly. And I mean, it's, yeah, it depends, like, how big of a drop-off are you feeling? How big of a drop-off do you think that is with those running backs is basically what you're asking yourself. And is it worth, yeah, and is it, would you, would it's basically like a trade almost. So, yeah, those are tough spots for people. I would? Yep, I agree. And, Dob, let's just highlight the teams in the lottery, too, and we can keep this moving. It's yeah. TGY. Oh, yeah, um, it is. Money, there's a money team. Money team in the lottery? Yeah, money teams in the lottery. No, yeah, yeah. they are. You do have money team, baby. Foams, bunts, and baby. And yep. cheese. Those six. Um, and cheese. And cheese. And we'll do the we'll do the lottery around fourth of July and then and then things will be moving from there. Yeah, we're gonna well, live we're gonna July live 3rd. stream. We're gonna live July stream. July third is the lottery. Yeah, yeah we're gonna live stream. Alright. <laughs> so I mean, I think we kind of everyone feel good about the keeper situation. I think we kind of covered that all, and um, just to keep this kind of going, we just want to yeah. do a quick little talk about uh, the match before. Um, oh, so every year we do we do a golf match. Me and Dale's versus me and Army versus Hot Sauce, Sorny, and and Top Cheese, Evan. Um, the the fourth annual match is July third as well, same day as the lottery. And me and Dales are up two one, looking to go up three one. And the way Dales has been playing, man, I just I might show up with a six pack and maybe maybe a few clubs, knock a few balls around town. I mean, this is gonna be pretty damn easy. It's kind of what I'm thinking. So here. So I've been. I, what match are we on? Look, I'll let me highlight the match quick, and I'll let you guys talk it out since you guys are match four. Playing. Is this four. the fourth yep. one? So I've been to the last two or three. Um, things I'm looking for this match. The quality of golf last year is really poor. I mean, if we're looking at the scorecard at the end of the day, I think we might have potentially three guys shooting in the 90s. I mean, that's reality. Dale's is the only one who played solid. Dale's probably shot around 80, 82. He played some decent golf. There's a windy day out in two harbors. Dodd shot like 95. Evan shot like 95. Sloan shot like 90. It was bad golf. So I'm looking for the quality of golf to be a lot better. And then second storyline. So Snipes has played horrible golf this year. It's no secret. Snipes has played some bad golf this year. He's, having, he's really struggling on the course this year. He hasn't shown up to a match yet. He hasn't stolen a match, per se. As you could, you could say that Evan, Dodd, and Dales were the sole reason their team won in each of the other ones. Sorny hasn't done that yet. He's played really poor in the past three matches. So looking for Sorny to try to reverse his um, play this year, as you would say, Actually, show up to the match for once. Yeah, so. here I'm gonna give. Should be uh, fun. Hopefully, I'm yeah. There. I, first of all, Jake being there is the greatest thing ever. He just rides around in the cart and pretty much chirps everyone. But uh, I just want to let you know that last week I beat Joe Daly on hole 14. Um, <laughs> he's sick as a dog. Beat him on 14. Yeah, and then he's starting to say he's got COVID or whatever the hell is going on. He never said hole 14. Hole 14. <laughs> I kick the shit out of him. Um, yeah, I don't. So I'm pretty confident. You I shot mean, 84, I buddy. Like, congrats. I didn't shoot 84. It was 82, I'm pretty sure. It was like 82. Wasn't right, it? can you comment on the state of your game? Because the reports out of Ridgeville Country Club um, have been pretty disappointing. You're, you're not playing good golf, is what it sounds like this if year. If you so. go look at, like, the Ridge, the Ridgeview Tuesday League, like, standings, I'm, like, top 10. For a reason, like I play pretty well. Um, I've been I've been actually playing pretty good golf lately. I got rid of the shanks or the the snap hooks is what you should call it. The snap. I had a case of the snap hooks. Like 
And I, I completely got rid of that. These last two rounds I've played, I'm just absolutely nuking the ball. Like, I'm out driving Joey Cummings, literally, out driving him. Uh, B. Dale's on 14. I'm making... Joey Cummings name drop on the yeah. podcast. Uh, Shout out to Joey yeah. Cummings. Uh, I'm yeah. making putts. Like, putts are falling, for sure. I'm getting it re-gripped now, too. It, I'm looking good. I'm, Whatever. Bunch of guys dropping out of the arrowhead. It's like, shit. Like, am I going to be, like, a 17 seed? <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking to be in like that. I'm probably going to be in the uh, first, the second flight range, but I'm not. Yeah. I mean, I, I hope to God this is the year that Dales makes champ play. Like, he deserves it over me, but yeah, it might be the year that I, I steal it from him. I agree on the arrowhead. I agree on the arrowhead, but if we're going to talk match quick here, I, if I had odds on the match, I it's seriously creeping towards... Dale's gone more around like that minus two seventy five sure. range. They're heavy favorites, right? sure. like with the state of Sony's golf game. I mean, <laughs> they're both. I would give Evan and Snipes are probably around plus two ten. Really nothing wrong. Yeah, they're ball, huge yeah. underdogs. I will say this though. I'm not loving how much Evan's golf game is flying on the radar when he just texts in. Oh, shot eighty one from the tips with forty putts today. It's like. Just has an okay putting day. This guy might steal one. Like I'm not. I'm not. I'm. Not, I've always. He's like. He's the X factor. Kind of seems. Steal one. It kind of seems like Evans the match is. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, mean, I, I imagine. Was, I know. Sorry, hey, I don't. Know I've always hit the ball. I've always hit the ball very so well. Imagine if you had a caddy there. He hits read, the ball on the yard. Read the green for you. Like I'm gonna be there to read green for you. Sorry. Hot sauce. Can I explain <laughs> something to you? <laughs> It has nothing to do with my green read. Really it, it That's not be, what right? it is. Like, you're the worst putter in the league. No, no because because then that that would be you implying that I'm making good putting strokes and just misreading the putts. The whole problem is that I can't make a good clean stroke sometimes. And I'm going to be there right next to you. I know I'm, how to read. All read. I'm going to say, giving you confidence. All I'm gonna say is. I look forward to Evan sweating out over a five footer to have a hole. And the guy who was too deep after three holes last year is a little bit of an X factor as well. That's all I'm going to say. No, he's not. No, he's not. not the I guy mean, who's played nine. God holes might as well sell his club. It doesn't matter. God needs to sell his club. Okay. I would be, Dad needs to sell his clubs on Craigslist, man. The guy's played one year round all year. I don't think he'll show up. He'll shoot around in ninety to ninety five. Dale's is gonna have to carry that. I don't. Yeah, I, I totally don't agree. It's a one v two. I don't have. I don't even have to show up. I could show up with mini golf clubs and we'd still win. That's the whole thing, too. And I mean, I'm the guy with the stolen match under my belt after what I did it. After what I, I did in V two. You're putting a lot of pressure on your teammates, saying that you're putting a lot of pressure on no, your teammates. No, I'm not. Because my teammate's a little stick. My teammate knows he's a little stick. He's going to walk in and dominate these little hacks because it's that easy for him. It's not it's not pressure. But Hey, Jack, up? I have a question. Yeah. Um, so last year you said that uh, you would – you would, would you agree with me that you have said that the reason Dale's played so well is because you made him comfortable? Um, I do agree that me playing well – Made Dale comfortable. Oh, just a yes or no. Just a yes or no. Yes or no question. Well, the answer is no because I don't think Dale's played well because I made him comfortable. You're the one that said it, though. Yes, Dale's didn't play well because I made him comfy. Dale's played well because Dale's is a good golfer. Does me making him comfy help uh, our team morale? Of course, it's way more fun on the course when Dale's doesn't have to sweat out everything. But does him playing well have a direct? It, effect on me making them happy? No. No, I just, I only, I only, I only asked that because you said you could show up with mini golf clubs and like not even try and it wouldn't like change anything. But last year you said that like you showed up, played really well, made him feel comfortable and that had a huge impact on me. Match. Well, okay. Yeah. Me being minus two after three holes did have a big impact on the match. And I do believe that I should, if I, because of the strides Dales has made this year and the way your guys' games are looking, I do believe this year I could show up with no clubs. So, if you have any more questions, I'd be happy to answer them. What the pride? They just be doing Another thing I'm looking week. for. Another thing I'm looking for. You know, Stipes has been going to RCC a lot and just jacking around on the course. He's playing a <laughs> scramble from the red tees. He's 
scooping his five footers all over the yard. It's like he's gonna have to start putting this stuff out and come in the match. I don't, I don't think he's ready for it. He's I don't think so either. Yeah. Really? Because I just beat your buddy on. But I think that scramble for the right teams was a lot of fun. All right, on fourteen last week. <laughs> all right. Well, I, I I think this pod has has ran its course. Um, it's good to finally get another one of the books. Our second one, may, probably our our first officially, because we had some copyright issues with some of the some of the things we did last pod. Um, but we will definitely be back this weekend with a a draft lottery, hopefully a draft lottery podcast, and potentially an update on on the match. And we're looking forward to having you guys all back. And until then, sayonara, we thanks had, everyone. We had-